Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at estampabook.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Today we are going to be creating some really pretty cards. They are part of the One Stamp at a Time blog hop. Our design team today is using a theme of Step It Up. And what that means is we're gonna start with a beginner, a casual and then an avid card. And I'll explain everything when we flip the camera around. I chose to use the beautiful Whimsical Trees Suite bundle in the holiday mini catalog. And can I just say that designer series paper is delicious. Okay, we're gonna flip the camera around and get started. And I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, I want to show you these products before we get started. This is the beautiful designer series paper. It is a specialty paper and you can see the foil embossed images on here. Absolutely gorgeous. I love this color palette for Christmas. Then we've got the Whimsical Trees. This is a set of 10 stamps, all very, very pretty. And we have the dies. There's a set of 13, and these are called the Christmas tree dies. So lots of really fun elements in here. Now, along with this entire suite, we also have this beautiful Blushing Bride frayed ribbon. I love this stuff. And the wonderful Snowflakes iridescent die cuts. These are super pretty too. So there's a lot of features in this suite. Let's get started and I'll explain to you a little bit about this Step It Up. I'm gonna bring in my piercing mat. That's what this is called. It's a stamp and pierce mat and I just covered it with some printer paper to make sure I don't stamp on it. But I like to use this as my stamping surface. So the first card that we're going to make is a very, very simple card. And um, that is where you start with the beginner stamper. So all three of the cards we're gonna make today graduate up. We're gonna start with the beginner. And then we go to what we would consider a casual stamper, somebody who maybe has a little more supplies and a little more experience, to the avid stamper who has tons of supplies and lots of experience. Okay, I'm using crumb cake. This is five and a half by eight and a half and I have folded it in half. Then I have a piece of basic white and this is three and a half by three and a quarter. And then one other thing that I would like to grab, when I cut my card fronts, you know, you take a sheet and cut it four by five and a quarter, um, four pieces. You get all these little leftover pieces. I like to keep these in a bag because I use them frequently as banners on my cards. So we are going to bring in our mint macaron ink pad. We're also going to be using crumb cake. And I chose to use this cute little tree. I think this is just really charming, very wispy whimsical as the stamp set is called. So we've got mint macaron. I'm gonna stamp my center tree first and then a tree on either side. Then we've got our half inch scrap. And I'm going to use the Let Your Heart Be Light with Crumb Cake ink. I think I'm just gonna stamp that right here. Oh, I got it really straight, so that's good. Now, I want this to be centered, so I'm gonna leave a little bit hanging off the side. Grab my snips and snip this other side off. All right, one last thing. Well, there's a couple last things that I wanna do to this card. I'm gonna take this holly image and ink that in crumb cake ink and stamp it on my card base. We're also going to take an inside sentiment that says, may the love of the season warm your home and fill your heart. We're gonna stamp that right on the inside of our card. And we're gonna stamp that holly in here also, just like that. Okay, 
Now remember, this is for a beginner stamper. So there's not a lot of fluff going on here. A, beginning, a beginner stamper usually does not have a lot of supplies. So I just wanted to be really mindful of that. Oh, I stamped these the wrong way. Oh, hang on. I want it to go this way. So we'll do that again. And whether you're a beginner, a casual stamper, or an avid stamper, mistakes are very normal. So cut yourself some slack. Don't get too worried about it. <laughs> you guys, if you watch me, you know I never do, right? <laughs> it's pretty standard. Okay. We're going to add this layer right over here. And I just want to get the same margin on the top, the bottom, and the right side here. And then we're going to take some dimensionals. And this is a pretty wide span for a banner. Span, I meant to say span. So I'm going to put three dimensionals on here. And I'm not even going to use my take your pick tool because I'm thinking a beginner might not have something like that. So we'll use our fingernails and we're going to add that right across here. I think I want to trim just a little bit more off this side. Yep. And I'm going to put this right up here. There we go. I'm hoping that our beginner stamper will have some envelopes. So one of the easiest things they can do to spruce up their card is to stamp on that envelope. And I'm gonna add just a few little rhinestones. Rhinestones are kind of a staple, at least they are for me. And I know that when I was a beginning stamper, I was drawn to the rhinestones, so I did get some. Now let's take a look at this. We have used Crumb Cake Ink, Mint Macaron Ink, Liquid Glue, some scissors, a bone folder, our stamp set, and two different colors of cardstock here. So this would be a really good purchase for a beginner stamper and they would be able to make a nice, quick and easy card just like this one. All right, now we're gonna move on to the casual stamper. Now what my casual stamper has done, somebody with a little bit more experience and a few more supplies is they have added designer series paper. And of course I chose the Whimsy and Wonder specialty designer paper that goes with this entire suite. So the first thing I would recommend they do is cut a piece two and a half by six, take an envelope, Oh, and I forgot to add that the beginning stamper would have a pack of envelopes also. And I'm going to add this designer series paper to my envelope to decorate that up a little bit. And there we go, very pretty little envelope. I'm again going to use crumb cake cardstock five and a half by eight and a half. And I've got a layer for the inside, basic white, four by five and a quarter. By the way, all of these dimensions can be found on my blog. That address is right here. At the end of this video, there's going to be a link that I will point out for you that you will take you right to my blog post where you can find the list of everybody involved in this blog hop and hop along with us. So what I brought in here is the designer series paper. And this is four by five and a quarter. We're gonna add that right to the front of our crumb cake card base. Then instead of using a white panel, we're going to use a designer series paper panel. And this is three and a quarter by three and a half. And then I brought in our silver foil specialty paper. This stuff, if you have not used this yet, it's kind of brushed. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I just thought this would be a nice compliment 
to the Whimsy and Wonder Designer Series paper. Let's see if I can get this out of my package. Hang on, there we go. This has kind of a purple or plum tone to it, as does this one, and then you get the silver. Isn't that just gorgeous? This one is a little more dull. This is very brushed, and the silver has a bit of brushing in it. And again, this is called the Silver Foil 12 by 12 Specialty Pack. It's in our holiday mini catalog. Okay, so I used that. This is three and a half by three and three quarters. First of all, we're going to do a little stamping. And I'm gonna stick with that Mint Macaron. And I'm also going to stick with that same stamp. I'm going to stamp my trees right on my designer series paper. Just like that. I've also got a layer of the designer series paper. This is a half inch by mm, four inches. And we're going to stamp our sentiment right on the, the, the designer series paper. So, oops, you know what? I just probably got crumb cake ink in my mint macaron ink pad. I forgot to clean that. So there we go again, real life stamping with Kelly, right? Ooh, that turned out really good. And then I think what I'll do, I'm just gonna add some elements. Let's clean this first. I'm gonna add some elements to the ends of this layer. I think I'm gonna be trimming this off a little bit too. Yep, because I want this to be centered. Well, maybe it'll be okay there. I think maybe I'll add just a little bit more swirly whirlies down there at the end, okay? So that's what it looks like. Then, because I'm a little bit more of an avid or a casual stamper, we are going to take the silver let me measure this. I think I forgot to cut this. I did. <laughs> Hang tight. Four inches. So half inch by four inches. And then I took some of that silver and I cut that three eighths of an inch by four and an eighth. So let's make sure that lines up here. Yep, that lines up perfectly. Phew. Some days are harder than others, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. And now I'm gonna add this to my little frame. So a casual stamper might add a little bit extra, right, to their card. And this is just one easy way to do that. Okay, we are going to add our stamped trees to our silver specialty paper. By the way, you can find links to all of these products on my blog so that you'll be able to check them out, see the details, you can see what the price is. It'll take you right to my Stampin' Up! store where you'll be able to see all the details and decide if you need to buy them. As we all know you do. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. So please feel free to shop in my store. <laughs> Lots of goodies go with that. I give everybody a gift that shops with me. So that's always fun. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put that right here. And again, I've still got these rhinestones, right? So let's add those rhinestones to the top of our trees to add just a little bit of bling. And I think they look really pretty with the, um, it's kind of iridescent. These stars are kind of iridescent. So super pretty. Now we have this inside layer and what I decided to do with that being that I am a casual stamper, I took a, um, whoops, let me get my hair out of there. I took a half inch scrap of this designer paper and then I did a three quarter inch piece of mint macaron because I didn't think this would look that great on a white background, right? So we're going to layer this up. Oh, 
onto some mint, and then I think that's really gonna make the striped paper pop. And before we do anything, we're gonna stamp our sentiment. Let's get this cleaned. This, by the way, is my Shammy, S-H-A-M-M-Y. It is the best little stamp cleaner ever. Let's see if I can stamp this straight. Nope, it's a little crooked. <laughs> Try that again. Much better, much better. Okay, um, hmm, do we wanna put, no, I think we'll leave that. Well, you know what? I think crumb cake, where'd that ink pad go? Let's bring that back in here. This might look pretty, just like that. I like it. And then we'll add this. And this is gonna go right at the bottom. I'm gonna leave a little bit of white at the very bottom of my layer because that's really gonna help this pop. Now you can see it's hanging off the end a little bit. It is really hard to get everything cut at the perfect measurement. So I do a lot of trimming like that and don't, don't feel bad about that. It's pretty normal. Here comes our pretty little card that our casual stamper would make. I always like to add all these little details too because I really think that pops the cards up just a notch, don't you? Look at how cool that looks, okay? So here's our beginner and here's our casual. All we did was bring in some specialty paper in designer series paper and the foil. Everything else is pretty much the same, okay? Little strips of cardstock with more designer series paper and an inside layer. So we've definitely stepped this up. Here's our matching envelope. And I think I would like to stamp my tree on here also, just because I think it's so stinking cute. So now we have a flap and a tree. Okay, let's go on to the Avid version of this card. I should probably clean my stamps off here real quick. Hang tight. All right, again, we are using a crumb cake card base. So we'll fold that in half. Then we're going to bring in this designer series paper. Very, very pretty. I love both sides. So we're gonna use the side with the packages. So I am going to add this right to the front. There is a right side up to this paper. You can see that if I put it this way, my bows would all be upside down. So make sure you pay attention to that. I know I've glued on designer series paper that has a definite pattern upside down before and it's rather frustrating. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Okay, the other thing that I have here is some scraps. And I got these colors right from the designer series paper. The back of the paper has all the coordinating colors that the paper has in it. So that's what these are. And I'm using Misty Moonlight, Polished Pink, and Mint Macaron for my scraps. What I'm gonna do with that is bring in my dies because an avid stamper would probably have punches and dies, okay? And so that's how I'm going to step this card up from our casual card. So we are going to die cut. I'm gonna do the tall, there's a tall tree and a shorter tree. I'm gonna do the tall tree here and then two shorter trees on here. I'll be right back. Look at how cute these trees are. I love them. They're very whimsical, right? Now, one of the cool things that I really like about this particular um, bundle is that you've got all these trees in here. We have these trees. They don't have a matching stamp. They're just dies, right? We have a die to cut out these cute little ornaments right here. We have this tree right here that is a die. And also we have this little element. Let's turn it right side up that we can die cut and put on top of that tree. 
And you have this really cool tree. You can die cut the holly leaves. We've got some great stars here, some little ornaments to put on our trees. This woo, goes on this big tree right here. And we have a die to cut out this tree and a die to cut out this tree and some two-step stamping here. So there's just a ton of different options with these fabulous dies. All right, back to our card. I've got a piece of blushing bride here. This is about three and a half inches wide and a half an inch or three and a half inches long, a half an inch wide. Now I'm going to bring in another color of ink and that is Misty Moonlight. So we're going to stamp our sentiment. Oops, didn't do too good there, did I? That's much better. We're gonna stamp our sentiment on here. And now, as an avid stamper, I probably have some punches. And this is the Treasured Tags Pick-A-Punch, and I'm going to choose to punch the ends of my label or banner with this particular side. Hang on, let me get this, there we go. I always like to look on the back to make sure it's all the way in there. And that gives us decorative ends on the end of our little banner. And again, this is the treasured tags pick a punch. You can do three different sizes in here, half inch, three quarters, and one inch, and the same over here. So you get six different elements to this punch. We're gonna pop that up on dimensionals. We'll put the dimensionals on that naughty side that didn't stamp very good, right? And I sound like it's the stamp's fault. It was totally me. <laughs> and then one of the other elements that I'm bringing in as an avid stamper is some vellum cardstock. And I love the way this kind of tones down that silver. So this is the way that I'm gonna use it. But first, we are going to add our little Christmas trees. And rather than take the chance of getting glue all over the place, you wanna be careful with, um... so I'm gonna use mini glue dots. And I'm going to position my little trees with that biggest one in the middle here. Let's see if I can get it, there we go. And then we're gonna get our next tree, our Misty Moonlight tree, and we'll put that one right over here. And then our polished pink tree, for once I'm not calling it positively pink. Oh my gosh, I've done that so many times. I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit lower so we've got them kind of at different varying heights. Now. The thing that's neat about this is I don't wanna put glue and see glue through my vellum. So what I can do now is take my Take Your Pick tool, which is how I prefer to handle these things because it works really nice for me. And I am going to add a glue dot behind each of my trees because that way I'm not gonna be able to see through the vellum and see any glue marks. So that's just a handy little tip there. All right, now we're going to add this right to the front of our card. And I forgot to tell you, this vellum is two and a half by three and a quarter, and then the silver would be two and three quarters by three and a half, just so you know. And again, all the dimensions can be found on my blog. Now we're going to add our banner in the same place, but I think I wanna trim off a couple of these tree trunks so they're not sticking out from underneath of it. So we're gonna put that right in here. Make sure that's straight. Yep, looks good. 
I wanted to add some of this ribbon. So I think what I'm gonna do is tie a bow. This is the Blushing Bride Frayed Ribbon. I think that's what it's called, let me see. Um, mm, frayed Grow Grain Ribbon, I was right. So, so pretty. I'm just gonna pull that down so I have a nice little bow. That'll look really nice. Where do we want to put it? Here or here? I think maybe right down here. Another glue dot. There we go. And then we have our inside layer. Oh, we have to do our rhinestones. Let's not forget those. Oops. I'm gonna put those right at the top of each one of my little trees. So I'm just kind of carrying through the whole, the whole rhinestone at the top of the tree idea. There we go. And then we're gonna do our inside. What I decided to do here is we are going to use the Misty Moonlight ink stamp our inside sentiment. Let's see, that's pretty crooked. I need to stand up so I know what I'm doing, right? And I've offset this over to the side just a little bit because I'm gonna take this designer series paper and I'm going to add one of these little gifts. These are super easy to cut out. I'm gonna let our designer series paper do a little work for me. And I'm just going to add that right over here. So that's gonna be my pretty little decoration on the inside. Put this right in here. And then I've got a two and a half by six inch piece of the designer series paper. And we're going to add this to the envelope flap. Make sure that my paper is right side up. I don't want my bows to be upside down. Oh my gosh, this is so spectacular, isn't it? There we go. Here is our Avid Stamper card. What do you guys think? So let's bring those back in. Let's clear this mess up. Watch how quickly I do that. <laughs> Here is our Avid Stamper. Here is our Casual Stamper. And here is our beginner stamper. So we've got three cards, same layout, each just a notch up, which really shows you what you can do with the little designer series paper, right? Like that's pretty much all I added here was designer series paper and, and, and some more designer series paper and die cutting. Very cool. Now, this particular suite is what I'm going to be using for my kit class this month. You're gonna find all the details for that on my blog when you click right up here. So go check that out. You're also gonna find the blog hop, but when you click up here, you'll find the blog hop. You're gonna to wanna to click on home and that will take you to um, the top of my blog where you're gonna find out all about my kit class for the month. We are going to have the designer paper in there. You can choose whether you want to add on the bundle with the stamp set and the dies. If you already have it, you could just get the kit. It's going to include designer series paper, ribbon, and also 
iridescent snowflakes. So check out all the details for that. This is going to be a pre-order for the kit. It will be going out later this month. All the pre-cut card stock for four different designs, two of each for a total of eight cards with the product pack. It's so fun. All right, you guys, please make sure you click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't wanna miss anything I have coming out. Also, click up here to head over to my blog where you can join in on the blog hop and see some more Step It Up projects from the One Stamp at a Time design team. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day today to spend with me. Have a great Thursday. Bye-bye.